what I say. <laughs> <laughs> Very slippery characters. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> what what is happening? Mm -hmm. Do we uh, do the cook? Yep. What about your roster moves today? Yeah, we reassigned. Um, <clears throat> we reassigned three guys, and then obviously with the Ruby situation, uh, he was he was the fourth one. But everybody was an understanding that he'd be going to the minor leagues and see begin his his um, continuous progression. But the other three guys um, <clears throat> were reassigned, but are going to stay with us throughout the end of camp. We we need the, the bodies. We um, we feel like in a couple of cases with uh, with Connor being the second. Exception. Um, those guys deserve to stay here as long as possible. They have good camps, um, and uh, we thought it'd be nice for them to stay on board and, and continue learning our concepts and get some some quality at bats. In Congress' case, we felt like uh, give us a chance to watch him a little bit more. We didn't have a chance to see him too much because of his injury. So for different reasons, we we just wanted to bring those three guys along until the end of camp. How far do you think Ruby is? Uh, well, from what I saw in his bullpen today, he looked very powerful, very strong, and and looked like he's progressing quickly in the right direction. However, medically, we just have to use caution and know that he's he's walked through some challenging situations with with his arm. So we're not going to rush that process. And um, we liked what we saw. We know that um, he's ramping up quickly, and we're going to continue to challenge him. He's going to continue to challenge himself. And whatever that timeline is, he's got to give the right feedback. And um, you know, he's going he's to be on a progression, and, and he's going to tell us when it's the time. So I don't know exactly what that is. We haven't mapped that out. There's no strategy for Ruby, because we know that this is a rare situation. But he's on a very good path right now. From a mental standpoint, how do you handle some of these decisions or some of these conversations that you've already had to make some, but as it gets closer to the end, they become, I imagine, more difficult? And how do you prepare yourself to do that? You know, all send downs are, are very challenging and tough. Um, you know, we realize that everybody has feelings in there, and you're kind of putting the dream on pause. And um, I'm, I'm sensitive to that, and I want them to be aware of that. So I'm just honest with them. I, um, I want to be as transparent as possible and tell them what our thoughts are. And sometimes there are more, some are more difficult than others because, uh, you know, either guys have ran out of time and there's just not another spot. Um, and you know that they're, they're, they're doing things the right way. And in, in the case of a couple guys today, that, that was certainly the case. We, we thought Chris Negron and, and Raymond Fuentes were right on right on the edge of making this team, but it was a decision that was tough on this group, on, on this front office, and the staff because they played well. So those make the decisions hard. But in summary, I want to be as transparent and as honest as possible, and, and help them grow, and let them know that they need to get to work and do their job, and not uh, not waste time. With uh, Fuentes, and the WBC, did you get a, 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 a good look at him, um, or was his time compromised because of time in? Well, that was one thing I covered with him. I know that I could tell by the look on his face that he was, he was wondering if that had an impact on our decision. And my answer was no. We watched those games. I know he didn't play in all of them, but we watched and he had some meaningful at-bats and he did well. So we counted that. We, we evaluated what he did in those games. And he had a chance to do something very, very special. And if you ask anybody, I'm sure that they would like to represent their country on the level that he did. So he should be proud of that. I expressed that to him. But... Um, um, we saw what we needed to see out of Raymond. It's just we, right now, at this point in time, we were going in another direction. It doesn't mean the end of the, end of the road for these guys. And I, I want to, you know, I expressed hope for them and let them know that they made such a strong impact on, on everybody in this organization that if they do their job, they're going to perform and get back up here. You think you'll expect to see Blanco in the game tomorrow? Uh, he. Just completed a workout in inside here, and I'm going to get a report on how he does, uh, how, how he did throughout that. So I think tomorrow might be a little bit premature, mm -hmm. but we would like to see how he feels day by day and challenge 
challenge them through the process because we know that we're up against the timeline here. And what about for De La Rosa? I mean, they've got the same deadline, don't they? Uh, you talking about uh, Jorge, Jorge De La Rosa? Yeah. You know, I'm not aware of the timelines. Okay. I'm not dialed into what, what the language is on their contract. What I do know is that we're going to continue to evaluate performances. And um, we're getting close. We, you can see that the numbers are, are winding down, and, and you know where the competition still exists. And, and we want to see that for as long as possible. So um, the evaluation to me is the most important thing at this point in time, not necessarily the deadlines. And can you give a sense of what you've seen from De La Rosa? So yeah, far? I've seen him repeating his delivery with, with, uh, with some aggressive, uh, aggressive stuff. He's pitched back-to-back -back days. He's pitched in, um, you know, he, he's been one plus uh, through an outing. So, I think he's answered all the questions that we had internally here and um, you know, is deserved to stay through this point of spring training and, and have that strong consideration to make the team. You said you're not aware of the deadlines? The, all the deadlines, you know, I, yeah, I, I don't, that doesn't play into my, into my evaluation. I would think you'd want to know like, when you have to make a decision by. Well, sure you get I just, well, I'm not the one making the decision. What I do is give the input to the front office and they make a decision on the team. So they're probably aware of the deadlines more than I am. And they know when those decisions have to be made. So yeah, I, I, that doesn't impact me one way or another in my evaluation. I can only do one thing and that's just give my input. Uh, have you um, mapped out who's gonna start when, uh, when the season starts, the starters? Oh, I'll give you guys that info on Thursday. I'll give you the whole, the whole uh, rundown on the five. So I haven't, we haven't quite got to that point yet. You've told some of those guys, though, haven't you? Um, I've told the guys all the way through the exhibition games. Um, and I've mentioned to Zach that he's got the opening day start. So that's as far as I've gone with most of the guys. Last week, you said you wanted to have your, your team together when you go to Chase. But does a an, an injury like Blanco's, does that alter that timeline at all? Or are you still set on that? Yeah, I think injuries. Um, will always have an impact on, on any moment. So we might ride it out a little bit um, with that situation. So I know that he's being evaluated and worked on very aggressively in the training room. And, and we loved what, what he was doing all the way up to the point where he was injured. So yeah, things will change equations for the most part. But you know, I, Mike and I have, have made, made um, the decision to not have it be such a chaotic time for those two games at Chase Field. We want to have our, I asked to have the team in place so we can kind of maneuver and manipulate the team the way that, that we're going to do it for the rest of the year. So um, we're going to be really close by that timeline. Is there a scenario where Gregor could, could open on the major league disabled list? Um, I don't know that right now. I don't know. So then who, what is the pitching situation at Chase? What do you told those guys? Um, it is going to be Walker and then who's game two? Walker and Ray. And then is Corbin doing something here on Wednesday? Yes, he is. Yeah. He's going to throw a game here um, on Wednesday to some minor leaguers, correct? D backs minor leaguers or, a, or another? Um, who do we decide on that? Was on Wednesday? I think it's one o'clock. So yeah, I don't think he's facing. I think it's, I think it's the Angels at one o'clock. Yeah. So it's just, uh, that's what the game plan is. So we're staying right in rhythm, right in line. You guys figure it out from there. <laughs> I'm not looking to give any competitive advantages. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I met Bill Belichick yesterday. <laughs> he briefed you. <laughs>